What is up, guys? Jake from One Hive, and I'm back with Rex for another base breakdown video. What's going on, buddy? Not much, Jake. It's, it's good to be back on the Jake Show. Yeah, man, we're doing a little better keeping up with these things. I mean, we've had a few base breakdowns come out lately, so people can't give us too hard a time. Uh, I know it's hard to for both of our schedules to line up, but tonight it did. Uh, so let's get into this base and start talking about it, man. Yeah, sure. Uh, this is a very common Town Hall 9 base. It's, it's pretty much known as Sudoku, if I'm not correct. Or, I'm not wrong. <laughs> yeah. Um, you see millions of modifications of this base, so we're going to try to go through what to look for and what modifications can change our rate up. Right, yeah, because it can't, I mean, so it, it goes sort of back to that, uh, the last Theorycraft video, the butterfly effect. Small, small changes in a base, not just in your attack, but small changes in a base can make big differences on the way your troops path, uh, the way things go down, uh, can change everything. So that's a good point. Uh, but we'll, we'll focus on this one, but we will talk about some different, uh, different variations of, the, of this base. So, as always, let's go ahead and start off with where the traps and bomb locations and, and deserts would be. Uh, and in this base, it seems pretty obvious. What would you say, Jake? Yeah, I mean, 99.9% .9 of the time on this base, you're going to have double bombs in two of these four locations. And just as often, uh, the Teslas will be basically guarding those bombs. So you can't just drop a troop and, and spring the bomb. So uh, that's what almost every time you're going to see. Yeah, and I agree with you. Sometimes you'll see some weird, weird modifications where they'll double up on Teslas in one compartment so they can go like double Tesla. Um, and that's just weird. It doesn't make very much sense, like defensively, and it doesn't really help you. It actually makes your weak, uh, your base weaker, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I don't uh, remember if it was a live attack or if it was just a normal attack, but I ran into a base just like that. Had double... Teslas and double and double bombs in the other two locations, and it threw me off. I mean, it was an easy cleanup for somebody, but it it screwed me up. Yeah, and the, the problem with that is because uh, for the for our viewers who might not know or might not have the experience, what happens is, say there's a double giant bomb here, but there's no Tesla protecting it. One can just say and a single hog and trigger one or both of those giant bombs. Or, mm -hmm. and same on the other end. Yeah. Makes it a lot. It makes actually makes it easier. But again, when you're expecting something else, it can throw you off for the first attack. Uh, but yeah, that's yeah. what you're going to see almost every time. Is what we just drew out there. Yeah. So this base is actually three star by Raisin, and she decides to holo wee wee this base. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's holo wee wee. Yep. But yeah, Jake, uh, if you are tackling this base, what? Would you really? What, what would you? What, what would you be your thoughts initially? Well, um, after you decided those Teslas and bomb locations. And one thing that the the one critique that I would give Raisin, the one thing she didn't do, is always bring barbs and drop right out here and trigger these Teslas. Uh, I've had it happen to me. We've shown it on the channel so many times. Uh, if you start taking out, especially if you're sending uh, balloons in on one side and then immediately going to the next location and deploying balloons there, each time one of those Teslas pop, your balloons hesitates for, I don't know, half a second, whatever it is. Uh, it can actually cost you that little moment that they need to drop the bomb and not take out the defenses. Uh, so the first thing I would do is drop me a barb on each on each one of those compartments, trigger all four Teslas so they're exposed, uh, no more hesitation for any of my troops. Yeah, you're completely right, and that's a great point, Jake. Uh, I do this, whenever I see ex, uh, exposed Teslas on any base, Town Hall 9 or Town Hall 10, I always drop a barb first as well. But the other point that... Uh, that can be mentioned is if you drop a barb and say a Tesla pops up here or even a double Tesla pops up here, nothing pops up over here. Mm -hmm. uh, that gives you so much more information than when you didn't have a raid. True. Uh, and before you go into this raid, you could actually make a plan out for each of those contingencies. If a double Tesla pops up or if a Tesla doesn't pop up, you're pretty much going to know where the traps are. Yeah. If it, basically, if, if a Tesla doesn't pop in one of those locations, uh, I'd send a hog right behind it because there's probably a, a double bomb there and you can spring it, at least one of the bombs, and eliminate one of his double bomb sets. Yeah, you're completely right. And so, excuse me, uh, so if you drop a barb there, uh, what would you do right after that? 
Well, it, as soon as the Teslas, let's say everything's where we thought it was and the Teslas all pop, um, I would do what Raisin did. I would take out two of the compartments opposite of each other uh, with balloons. Uh, she, the way she did it was correct, uh, sending balloons in for the, for the Tesla to die first, then following it up with balloons for the Archer Tower and the Wizards. The reason you delay that is it doesn't matter where you drop them out here. They're all going to go to the Tesla, and you don't want your balloons clumping up because then they're all going to go to the same defense probably, uh, and then this Wizard Tower can be shooting them all at one time. So take the Teslas out with balloons, let it go down, and then take out the other two remaining defenses with your balloons. Uh, that would be my yeah. my plan. And again, opposite of each other. And you'll, we'll talk more about that in a little bit. But if you take out this section, the other section you want to take out is this section. Never do like this one and then this one up here. Uh, that's that's not what you want to do. Yeah. So what you're trying to do is neutralize these giant bomb positions. Uh, that way, you're, when your hogs go through the base, they're able to uh, they're able to, to avoid those giant bombs. Right. But the reason why Jake uh, selected these and Jake and Raisin selected the, the two compartments over here is because if you notice, the two core air defenses have pretty poor coverage. Uh, if you select the air defenses, it just yeah. reaches the edge of those defenses. Yeah, but the balloons are basically on top of them by the time they are in range of the air defense, which that will never uh, really affect your count very, unless in rare circumstances but basically still two balloons for each takes them out even with those air defenses barely reaching yeah and if, if uh, I believe Raisin does this in a, her raid but I wasn't completely sure uh, I have to rewatch it but after you take while you're you, after you take out the Tesla and while you're deploying these two I would probably go ahead and send one more loon to get these last this, this last cannon um, same thing on this other side Raisin does not, but that's a, that's a good point. That, that's a pretty good trade there uh, that you could probably get with, with one balloon on those. Yeah, and it's because uh, the reason why you're able to do that is because this air defense is going to be shooting these loons, mm -hmm. trying to protect these defenses while they're there, and so it won't have time to, to attack this last balloon. Right, and that archer tower is probably even going to be locked on for a moment or two uh, by, to those the two loons that are going for the wizard tower once they get there. Yeah, that's a, that's a good move. Uh, and then, again, once you once you do that, it's going to get the clan castle lure, and it's going to eliminate two of these com uh, giant bomb compartments, the possibilities. Uh, it really doesn't matter on this particular base if the bombs are there or not, and we'll talk more about that as we get into the attack, but once you have eliminated those two, you can then deploy the rest of your troops in a manner to where it doesn't matter, even if you got unlucky and, in, and the bombs were in these locations. Uh, it, it really doesn't matter. Uh, it, it can be that way. Once you have successfully taken out the two opposite sides, uh, you're good to go. Yeah. Yeah, so, okay, so we've success, successfully neutralized these two opposite ends. Um, sorry, I'm going to go like this. Yeah, go ahead. So all these defenses are gone, and all these defenses are gone. All right, and and what's going to happen is most likely these loons are going to be able to are going to be sufficient enough to get the clan castle lure as well. Yeah. Uh, you might want to send in one backup hog just in case uh, the enemy clan castle has a, a ground only troop. Yeah. A troop. balloon or something like that. That's pretty popular these days. Throwing a balloon on the back or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So probably wh whichever direction. Um, I mean. I'm not completely sure where I would send in the hog. I would probably send it here so I could uh, get it to activate a spring trap and get rid of it. Or uh, if there's no Tesla that pops up here, um, but there is, so it wouldn't yeah. matter. But if there was not a Tesla, I would probably send it in here and try to pop off a jump off. Well, and another thing you could do is as soon as, uh, if you look at the ring there where, the, where it comes to, as soon as these defenses go down, uh, the Archer Tower and the Wiz Tower, you can also send one in right here. That's going to go to that mortar. It just needs a moment inside of range. You know, once once the lure is completed, uh, just a moment, and then that, that troop, whatever it might be, that is not uh, going to target a, an air troop, a balloon, will pop out. Yeah. That's yeah. Exactly right. Uh, one thing you can tell, Raisin is a very skilled raider, because while this is all going on, she knows... Um, 
what you'll, what you'll notice is she deploys a couple of wall breakers here. Mm -hmm. And what that does is not only does it break this, this wall right here, but as after these clan castle troops are going to, are coming out, they actually start moving towards the back, back to the bottom of the, over here and she's going to do the kill squad from this direction so she's already saving herself a couple of seconds by bringing the clan castle down yeah bringing them towards where she's going to anchor and and start her kill uh which brings us to the next the next step of it is is where you want to do your kill squad and obviously if you've taken out the two sections that we've talked about the obvious choice is down here at the bottom like you said you can funnel them into this compartment uh, that's going to help you trigger these bombs if they are there, and obviously you've still got to get to the queen. So yeah, that's the logical choice of where to do it at. Yeah, and in, in creating this funnel, it's, pr it's pretty easy too if you've destroyed these defenses, because then all you have to do is drop a wizard or a, just a minion. Um, once the clan castle troops are engaged with your clan castle troops or your kill squad, uh, yeah. And if you if you if you cut it off here, the only w and break open this wall. The only direction they have is to go in towards Right. There's a, there's a nice natural break right there anyway. So if you take that out, they're, they're all going this direction. I said that was the one thing I was going to uh, critique Raisin for. There's one other thing that I want to critique her for, and we'll see it when we get to her raid, uh, is her jump spell placement. With the location of the queen and looking at her range, uh, how far she, she's going to be willing to come, uh, Raisin breaks this wall with wall breakers and then tries to connect all the way to the core with the jump. And that's a pretty wide gap, and it doesn't really go well. I would either one have have not brought the jump, and just brought more wall breakers. These are low level walls. Uh, maybe even a rage spell right there for them to to get in. But all she has to do is drop a jump spell on this. Make sure that her troops will jump over this direction because the queen's going to make it over that first set. Uh, as soon as a golem or whatever is is right here beating on this, or the king beating on this archer tower, the queen's going to engage, and she's going to come a pretty good ways over that Lego wall and stand in the moat there. Uh, so really, the, the spell placement on the jump, I think, was, was a little off, and it ends up that her queen has to take out the defensive queen because her king doesn't use it. He doesn't go over. The golem doesn't go over. It was sort of wasted. Yeah. Yeah, so jump spells are pretty difficult to place when it's over there. Uh, I think... You, you're right to either put it here. Uh, I probably would have opted for a rage myself. Yeah. Um, but right, even right here is a pretty good location yeah. for a jump spell. Yeah, I agree. Just anything to get him into the moat because, again, the queen's going to come over that moat wall. She will, you know, she yeah. will engage way out here in this area, and anything standing there, she's going to jump over and get in range of it. So it was just sort of unnecessary, and I'm like you. I probably would have brought just a rage uh, for this area. And just you know, an, an extra four or five wall breakers. One of them's gonna one wall breaker under rage is gonna bust that wall. So yeah, and they'll probably even make it to the core. Very, very likely. I agree. But that's yeah. that's. So if we get go ahead. Can we get rid of uh, some of these X's? Real yeah, quick? we'll just clear it off. If you want to? Yeah. So let's let's kind of backtrack. We've gotten rid of this defense. We've gotten rid of this defense. We've gotten rid of these ones. I'm gonna go ahead and X all the ones. The Teslas as well there. Right. So the Teslas are gone. Uh, and if we send in our, our sent in our kill squad successful, these defenses are, are now gone. Um, and then our heroes are going to engage the queen with the jump spell. Mm -hmm. So now this just leaves your hog deployment. How would you go ahead and do that? Yeah, that's a great point. And I like that you, uh, I like the way you X that all out. So let's talk about that. And let's just let me, if you, if you don't mind, let me just sort of draw lines on the sides here your hogs would have no reason to cross those lines ever they're not going to there's no defenses over there to make them go that way so if you've sent your uh kill squad in here these giant bombs are triggered if it's me my my hogs come in right behind it right up the middle they're going to go to this to this uh cannon this archer tower if it's still up straight to this air defense and mortar uh, even if they go out to the sides here at this uh that archer tower they're all going to come through the core, and then as they get to the end here, they are going to end up at this air defense and mortar. Okay, so if they're at that air defense and mortar and you've kept them alive and you've got one heal, there's no way they can trigger those double giant bombs at the same time. They're going to jump over this wall and attack either the archer tower or the wizard tower and trigger that first bomb. They're going to be standing in a heal by the time the archer tower and wizard tower go down and they would trigger the second bomb they're going to be healed up and they're going to be safe 
Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, kind of to backtrack, I, I personally would probably two finger deploy this from like this angle over here, which I mean, it, it doesn't make a big difference. Yeah, I know the what you're saying. The only thing that really matters, I'm gonna go ahead and go for loot, is that this wizard tower goes down, and yeah. the reason why that matters is it doesn't. Um, and this Tesla, sorry, those two defenses. If your heroes and your golem don't act, don't trigger these this giant bomb over here, it really doesn't matter because your hogs are going to go from this archer tower and jump it. They'll never path over here. That's that's a good point. Uh, I would, you know, I would assume that these defenses, the Tesla and the Witcher Tower, would go down to the kill squad uh, before they even get to the queen because she is sort of tucked back in there. But you never you never know how quick the, it'll aggro, especially if you place the jump spell over here. So uh, that's a good point. Uh, but but again, it, if you've done it from the from these opposite sides, and that's why I said it doesn't matter uh, if the bombs are here or not. If if one of the sets are over here, that's great. You know, maybe you get lucky and both sets are, are there and there, and you don't have bombs to worry about. But it literally doesn't matter if you got completely unlucky, and the bombs were here and here. You still have successfully pathed your hogs in a way to where you can control how they're triggered, and that's the whole key to a hog attack. Just to reiterate, uh, can, can, can we please off? Yeah. Can, uh, just to reiterate to our viewers what, what Jake is saying is, let's say the air defenses were here, here, um, and here and here. Mm -hmm. So that imaginary line uh, that Jake was drawing, in this case, you're going to clear out these two sides. Exactly. So these two sides will be clear. That leaves this path, this one single pathway for your hogs to go up across the middle. Mm-hmm. Exactly, and it works the same way. You get in here, you get the queen out, you trigger bombs if they're here, you trigger them, and then when your hogs end up at this at this mortar here, they're going to go from there to the wizard tower or to the cannon and trigger the first bomb. The second one's going to be fine because they're going to be standing in the hill. By the time it's triggered, they're going to be back to full life. Yeah. Well, she does an exceptional job in the space. Let's uh, kind of go back to what we were talking before we started the recording in and discuss some of the modifications of this space that can limit or maybe change up the ray rate. Yeah. Yeah, you see, you see so a lot of different versions of this base. I mean, it, people play, when you got a popular form base like this, people play with it a lot. They move things around a lot. Yeah, I agree. And uh, a lot of the times you'll see a couple open spaces here in the core, uh, and that'll change up the way you rate as well because they those can be double giant bombs or those could be teslas but you have to account for that and, and figure out how you're going to plan to go um and neutralize those giant bomb spaces yeah the, the double open spaces yep definitely yeah and then one uh, last comment is this person uh sudoku was started getting really common back in the old like before that hog um, and hero patch came in because the idea behind Sudoku was to create a ring path mm -hmm. um, and then have an inner ring but on this base there is no ring path because if, if you try to if, if you think about hog pathing let's just say we're hogging this and we don't um, there is no ring there's no discernible pathway uh, for the hogs to go so they'll, they'll just kind of bounce around everywhere yeah yeah, it's not a continuous a ring like you'll see in a lot of times because essentially he's got a ring, a moat with defenses in it, and then a core. So, like you said, the, the hogs could path uh, straight in from here to there and then hit this uh, air defense and go straight into the core. You don't just depending on which angle they come in at, how they path around these storages, things like that. It can change everything. Yeah, I'm totally right. Yep. Okay, well, that's all I really have to say for yeah, this. It's a uh, there are a couple other, uh, actually, actually one more thing, there is a couple other modifications where sometimes the Teslas will be here. Of course, on this space it can't because these army camps are eating those spaces up, mm -hmm. but uh, that's something to keep in mind as well. Yeah, and, and this base can be taken out multiple different ways. Uh, we were talking about it before the recording. Uh, La Lunion can take this base out. Uh, there's there's different ways you can do it. But we, if you see this exact setup, I don't know that it gets much better than the way Raisin did it. So uh, if, if you're ready, Rex, we'll take a look at it. Yeah, let's go. All right, let's get it started here. 
Okay, Raisin just starts uh, again with, with balloons. She starts on the left side, and you'll see, just like we talked about, dropping two balloons, letting it take the Tesla out, now sending those in. You can't let all your looms get bunched up. That wizard tower will do too much damage to it. Same thing on the opposite side. Uh, the one thing that we said there that we would probably have done is, is bring a barb and trigger those Teslas first so the uh, balloons didn't pop, but she did it slow enough and patient enough uh, that it worked out. You'll see right down there, like Rex talked about, uh, the wall breakers are already done doing the damage. The walls opened up. Now she's just dropping her anchor, uh, bringing them down to the bottom here and starting her kill. Uh, drops a few barbs, witches, wizards, the normal kill squad stuff, uh, backed it up with a queen. Uh, you'll see that cannon is shooting at her kill squad because she didn't take it out like Rex suggested. Uh, again, one loon probably would have got that, so it would definitely have been a good trade. Uh, Golem goes down, Tesla pops, uh, king right behind it. Uh, nowhere else for that to go. There, again, that natural break there. She didn't even have to really create the funnel. It was already there because of that natural break. Uh, she just dropped her king to that side. You'll see the jump spell there. Uh, I don't know if the troops couldn't get to it, if it actually was too far towards the core, but they never really used it. Uh, they stand on the outside here. You'll see no bombs were there. But right here, the queen gets shot and locks on. And luckily, uh, she's got that beefy 30 queen because that last shot as she was leaving took her out. Now here come the hogs. And again, you'll see... They're going to stay towards the center of the base. There's no reason for them to stray to those giant bomb possibilities out there because it's all clear. Uh, just dropping heels on them, keeping them up, uh, working their way through the core. You know, pretty simple stuff here. And as you see, it, they're going to they're going to spread out a little bit here, and they're going to go to those sort of uh, side defenses. But they're going to end back up at that mortar and air defense. And when they do, she's got that one heel left in the bag there. Right there, it goes down. Here they come. Mortar goes down. They jump the wall. First bomb's triggered. They're already healed back up. Second bomb, boom. No problem. Hogs are fine. Plenty of them left. She still has some kill squad back here with her king cleaning up. Queen's in there cleaning up with the town hall. Uh, last defense goes down, and now they're jumping onto the king and moving on. So that was it. Just like I said, a beautiful attack. Just made real short work at that base. Uh, can't get much better. Yeah, and Raisin's a freaking beast raider so she she already knows uh she knows really well how to path her hogs or how to execute her plans yeah. uh, depending on what army composition she's taking and so what you our viewers need to do is, is really think through the pathways and, and figure out how to neutralize each of the the four giant bomb possibilities or or the x amount of giant bomb possibilities that a base will have like she has done here Yep, I think you're right. I think next to base identification, uh, learning what will take out a certain base, troop pathing is the, the very next uh, most important skill you can learn in this game. Uh, to me, it's base identification, then troop pathing. If you get those two things down, you're going to be pretty good. Yeah, and if you understand, hogging is probably one of the best troops to, well, to town all night. Uh, I mean, you can probably play the game in easy mode and go Lava Lunian style and just spam it and win. Yeah. But if you really want to understand the game um, and how pathing works, then hog is the way to go. I agree. You know me. I'm a hog fan. So, uh, uh, got, man, I, I enjoyed it, Rex. This was a good one. I, I enjoyed this base and breaking it down with you. Uh, anything else you want to say before we wrap it up? Nope. Uh, I look forward to the next time that we do another break, base breakdown. You bet, buddy. All right, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Until next time, Jake and Rex doing our best to help you guys suck less.